Hey gang, it is Monday, June the 4th, and this is episode 16 of Monday Morning Leftovers, where we try to bring you everything we could have, would have, and should have said on Sunday morning, but for whatever reason, we didn't get a chance to. So here's what I want to bring you today. I want to bring you some encouragement if you're facing a trial or a test right now. Uh, the Bible talks about two different kinds of trials or tests that, uh, that we go through in life. One trial or test is the kind we bring on ourselves. Uh, when we make, when we sin, when we act on our own wisdom, when we act uh, unwisely or selfishly, or we let our emotions dictate our reaction, our actions, and we find ourselves in a mess that we made for ourselves. That type of a trial or a test, there's a, a solution for that. It's called acknowledging, <laughs> repenting, correcting, changing, disciplining ourselves, and and making enough changes in our life that we don't repeat. Uh, the situation we made for ourselves. The second kind of test is one that God permits. It's part of life. It's the result of having an enemy that hates us and wants to destroy us, and his name is Satan. And we see in Revelation 13 and all throughout the Bible that Satan hates God, he hates Jesus, and he hates the followers of Christ. And especially in Revelation 13, John gives us a lot of detail about the types of trials and tests and really the type of persecution that the enemy has been doing since the beginning of time, that he's doing right now, and how it's that type of persecution and anger is going to be poured out from Satan against all Christians in an alarming and increasing intensity and brutality as we get closer and closer and closer to the wrapping up of time. And there's this... Uh, there's some really heavy things we, we handled on Sunday morning, the kinds of economic persecution and social persecution and verbal persecution and military and governmental uh, and, and physical threats and persecution and danger and even physical death that God will permit Satan and his beasts to be able to dole out on Christians um, as we get closer and closer to the end of time. It was a really hard read, and it was a hard thing to talk about on Sunday morning, but there's these little verses in the middle of it where John talks directly to us as Christians. And he says, here's, if you find yourself in this type of a situation, here's how you should respond as a Christian. And he says this, anybody that God has destined to go to prison is going to go to prison. Anybody that God has destined to be able to die by the sword is going to die by the sword. But you Christians, what you need to do when you face this kind of persecution, you need to endure it faithfully, you need to remain steadfast, and you need to be loyal to Jesus up until the very end. And I found it really interesting, and it's a, it's a hard pill to swallow. What he's saying is God has designed and destined for you and I to face tests, trial, persecution, and some of us, not all of us, tests that may result in our physical death because of our faith. What John doesn't say is go underground. What he doesn't say is uh, stockpile weapons and, and fight off all your persecution. Resist it. Try and get out of it. Try and avoid it. Ask God to bail you out. What John says is if God has destined you to face persecution, then persecution you will face. If God has destined you to face death for his sake, then you'll face death for his sake. If it's imprisonment that he's destined for you, if it is economic persecution, if it is relational dissatisfaction, if God has destined you to face certain trials and tests, then you will face them. But his motive is not to destroy you. His motive is not to punish you. His motive is to work out his will, his good and pleasing and perfect will in your life. In, in, in summary, and I wish I would have been able to say this Sunday morning, for whatever reason it just dropped out of my mind, what, what the Bible teaches in Revelation 13 and all through the Bible is there are good things God has for us. And if that's point B, if these good things God has for you is point B, if, if that's victory and freedom and, and eternal wealth and companionship with Christ and, and complete and total fulfillment of purpose and identity, if that's your point B, and you're here at point A, sometimes that space in between point B and point A is persecution or a trial or a test. And so many times when we find ourselves in the trials and the tests of life that are inspired by the enemy, don't you and I start saying, God, take me out. God, deliver me from this. God, make it all go away. God, I'm resisting this. Maybe, just maybe, what God's saying to me and to you today is this test that you find yourself in, this persecution that you're under because of your faith, 
maybe instead of asking God to take us out, we need to ask for his strength to be able to take us through. Because so many times I find myself asking God to remove me from something he doesn't want to remove me from. He wants to lead me through. So I want to pray with you this week, and I want to encourage you this week, if you're facing a trial or a test, not one you brought on yourself, but one that God is allowing in your life to perfect you, to move you in the direction he wants you to go. I want to pray for you that you don't tap out, that you don't break down, but that you break through. So would you do me a favor? If you've made it five and a half minutes into this video and you're facing a trial or a test, will you leave me just a short comment below, five words or less, describing the trial or test that you're in right now? Because I blocked out some extra time this week that I'm going to pray for you. I want to pray that you don't break down but that you break through, that you remain faithful and steadfast. So give me five words or less on the trial or test you're facing, and I'm going to pray with you this week. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you at Sunday at church.